Let's DIY a micro front end framework today on Blue Collar Coder. I built a series of three videos on micro FEs a few months back, and, and they still get a lot of play, and that's great. Uh, but I started working with Open Components again, which is one of those frameworks, and it, it just didn't fit the bill for me. So I started poking around in the code, and it's actually, it's really good code. But it is complex, and it got me thinking, I, I should get more comfortable with this by just kind of writing one myself. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have three criteria here, three requirements. We want lazy loadable components, and they should be implementable in any framework, or no framework at all, if that's how you roll. We should be able to place them on a page in specific locations, maybe by like a tag, open component style, or, or, or like web components. And third, they should be able to share data or communicate with one another somehow. Now for this example, I'm going to just use a very simple product detail page, like I did with the other microFE examples. On the left-hand side, we're going to have the product image, and on the right-hand side, we're going to have a, like a checkout or a buy tools, and it's going to be, you're going to be able to ch change the product, add to cart, things like that. So let's jump right in. So first I'll start by creating a component directory that's going to hold all those components, and a host directory that's going to hold the host page. Then within components, I'm going to create a checkout directory that'll host the checkout component, and I'll write that in React. Now for this, I'm going to use parcel as a bundler, since it's super easy. Now I'm going to create a dev script that pushes this code over into the dist directory of the host page. That's where it's going to go. But in reality, you'd probably do this with like a registry or S3 or something like that. Now I'm just going to create a very simple React component. Now that we've got the React component, this is where it starts to get interesting. Normally, we would just export that. But instead, we want to register a component creator with our microFE framework. The framework is going to be accessible through a DIY object registered on global, which is really just window. And the framework will have one method, register component, that will take a name and an object. So for the name, we'll use checkout. And then the object will have a create method on it, which takes a node to attach the component to, and a set of props. And that's going to be called from the framework to us. So in response to that, we're going to use React DOM to render that component onto the specified DOM node. All right, let's get that going and head over to the host page. So for the host page, I'm going to do something very similar with Parcel. For the index.html, first I'm going to make some CSS just to make the text big. Then I'm going to create a slot where we place that checkout component, just a div. And finally, I'm going to bring in both the host page JS and the checkout component JS. I'll lazy load all the component JS uh, at the end of this. And now I'm going to start building out that global DIY object with the component registration system in it. And for the moment, I'm just going to go and call that and render it into that div on the page. So let's see if that works. All right, looks pretty good. And as you can see, the product ID is 12345, which is from the props that we're passing from register component. Now, let's go build ourselves an images component for the left-hand side. Now, again, I'm going to set up that folder and parcel. Now, same build process as before, but just with a different name. Now, this one I'm going to do in Vanilla.js, just to show you that we can do two different frameworks here. <laughs> Not that Vanilla.js is a framework. I'm going to put some placeholder content in there. Now let's head back to the home page and first import it. And we head over to the browser to just check that out. Whoop, oh, okay. Ah, I see. That's because we loaded the images script tag second and register component just sets checkout slot specifically to whatever we have. So images gets in there. So that's no good. So as a first pass, I'm going to have to differentiate by name and put images in another slot that I haven't created yet. Let's go create that slot and make a little CSS to make it all nice and grid wise. Let's see if that works. All right, that does. So that kind of covers our first requirement, which was to have components that you could write in different frameworks and load them on the page. But obviously it could be a lot better. So let's fix that. 
we'll change the placeholder tags to something that's more explicitly kind of framework-y, like we'll call them, I guess, I don't know, DIY component tags. And we'll add the names in there, maybe even some properties. All right, let's jump back in the code, make this work. First thing I'm gonna do is create a load components method that we'll call the create method for any DIY component tags matching the given name. I also need to keep the component information somewhere, so I'll create a components object for that. Now I'll use document query selector all on that to get the DIY component elements that have that same name attribute. Let's run create on it. Ooh, we also need props, so let's iterate through all the attributes and turn that into an object. And then finally, let's call it and remove the old code. Let's check that out. Cool, it works. And as you can see, we got five, six, seven, eight, nine in there, which came from the HTML attribute. All right, one more thing. I wanna make sure we don't create a microFE component twice. So I'm gonna set the loaded attribute on an element and use that to make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, that's looking really good. All right, I think kind of two requirements down, one more to go. So we've got like platform agnostic components that you can put on the page with the tag, so there you go. Now, how do we get them to play together? So you could use an event bus, like I did with the other microFE videos. We could do an MVC style thing, like we did over in the web components video, or we could use a state manager. And since I haven't done that before in this video, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do that here. Now, I've looked at a couple of different technologies for this, and I thought Redux, and I was like, uh, meh. And I was super excited about using MobX for this, but what I found was that each of the consuming components would actually have to include MobX so they could run the observe function on that store. And I really didn't want to go there. I just wanted to, you know, how, whatever tools you wanted to use in those components, that's up to you. I wanted something where the, the store would actually have methods on itself that you could subscribe to. So what I ended up with was RxJS. Now, if you're not familiar with RxJS, it's a, it's a reactive library where you can create streams of data that consumers can subscribe to really easily. And I'll show that now here by example. Now I'm gonna create some behavior subjects. What's, in, what's a behavior subject? Well, it's the type of object that has a value and you can subscribe to it and see when it changes. You get called back when it changes. And that's pretty cool. You can just pass this object around. You don't have to include anything. So it kind of meets my first requirement there. All right, let's create the product ID and the images. Now you could just get the store via global.diy.store, but just because I'm nice, I'm gonna give it to the component also as a prop. And now let's head over to the checkout component and start by creating a, some state that would hold that product ID in the React space. And next to run it once, we're gonna use a use effect hook that subscribes to the store's product ID. We give it a next function, which is called whenever we get a new value. Okay, it looks like we're getting a value and it's not from the prop. It's, it's from the store, so that's great. So next we're gonna handle a change in the store. I'll add a click handler to change the image, which will set the images array on the store using the next method on the images object. The next method in RxJS is basically what you give to give it like a, the next value for the object. Rx libraries are all about streaming data, so it's about like next, 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 all the way down the line. Okay, let's have it over to the images component and add the code to subscribe to that. So if you're not a vanilla JS expert, that's that's cool. Be sure to hit up my YouTube videos to get you know some background in that if you want. Okay, so let's check this out in the UI, and that's really cool. I click on change images in a React component. And then through the magic of RxJS, I see it change in a vanilla JS component. So we've got platform agnostic microFE components and they talk through a central store. So that kind of checks all my boxes that I wanted to get with this simple DIY framework. So I mentioned earlier, I was gonna get to the lazy loading part. I'm gonna use load.js to do that, which is what open components uses. First I'll grab load.js from the site and put it in the dist folder. Next, I'll add that as a script tag and then change the location of index.js to dist and then get rid of the script tags for checkout and images. All right, let's use parcel to bundle the JS, just the JS, and then fire that up. And then finally, I'm gonna go use load.js to bring in that code in a lazy loading way. It's not perfect, but yeah, it is lazy loaded. 
And then finally, I'll load up a simple static server that's a plugin to VS Code. That's actually kind of really handy, and that'll just serve whatever's in the root directory of the project. So I'm just going to do a few more checks by removing some old props and then changing the store value of the product to 2020. And I see that, and it looks good. All right, that was a bit of work, but that works too. Cool. Thanks for sticking with, with me through this one. It was a really fun build to build this out. And I do feel like I understand the problem space a little bit better for having done this. I did spend a bunch of time going through open components as a code base you know, to research this, and I've come away with really a lot more respect for that. A lot of great effort and hard work went into that library. It's a very, very strong set of tools. Now, I did want to add a new feature to my videos, and no, it's not plugging any products or services. I just wanted to randomly highlight a cool article or two that I've been recent, re reading recently. This time it's a Wired article on the terrible safety history of the B-17 and how that led to innovations in user interface design that we're still seeing in today's products. I really love articles like this because I just love kind of the history of how we got to where we are, and it really kind of helps me inform where I think we might be going in the future. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little DIY journey. As always, please like or subscribe if you're into this. Micro FE videos are far and away the most popular videos I do, so if that topic interests you a lot, please let me know in the comments if you have ideas for other concepts or technologies that you want covered. I have found a few new, or at least new to me, Micro FE frameworks out there, so I'll be putting up videos on those pretty soon. See you next time on Blue Collar Coder. Be kind to each other.